Welcome to the restored wetland at the Alder for Olenschlager Wildlife Sanctuary. This wetland will serve as the focus of today's wetland study. Organisms in this study represent residents and visitors of wetlands across Medina County Park District. Before we begin, what exactly is a wetland? A wetland is a unique area of transition where land meets water. In this transitional area, soils remain wet or hydric and do not drain. As a result, the area is often if not permanently under shallow water. Because water is shallow, sunlight reaches through to the bottom of the wetland, allowing for not only floating but also rooted aquatic vegetation to grow. Both shallow water and standing water limit access for predators. This factor coupled with ample and diverse vegetation makes wetlands incredibly valuable to animals of all shapes and sizes as not just a nursery, but also a home. Northern water snakes are reptiles and are relatively common vertebrate at this wetland. While it is not uncommon for this water snake to go undetected, it can be found sunning itself in aquatic plants, on rocks, and on paths along the pond and wetland edges. At up to 5 feet long, full grown, it is one of the few top predators specially adapted to life in ponds and wetlands. While they are most often observed basking, they are able to swim through water and will prey upon fish and frogs inhabiting the wetland. At this size, it is hard to believe that a northern water snake might be a ferocious predator, but as it eats, it grows. Over time, it is able to consume larger prey and fill a much higher role as a consumer in a wetland food chain. As adults, these snakes are often confused for venomous snakes. Their size, appearance, and perceived bad attitude contribute to this misunderstanding. In Medina County, if you find a water snake, it is most likely this harmless but large northern water snake. While it is not venomous, we still encourage you to observe these and other wetland organisms at a respectful distance. Pictured here are a male and female wood duck. The wood ducks show sexual dimorphism, which means that the male and female do not look the same. See if you can guess which one is which. If you guess that the colorful duck is the male, then you are correct. The female is better camouflaged for her nesting habitat pictured in this video. While this female wood duck is perched on top of a man-made nest box, it is designed to mimic the cavities found in mature and sometimes dead and dying trees. It is not uncommon to find dead or dying trees near wetlands, as not all trees are adapted to live in wet soils year-round. The cavities or holes in these trees make the perfect nest site for the camouflaged female wood duck to conceal her nest and ducklings. Life isn't easy as a young wood duck duckling. Before swimming around in their wetland, these little ducklings must take a brave leap and tumble out of their nest box or nest cavity, which can be quite high above the ground. They are unable to fly when they leave the nest. Luckily, they tumble fairly well. Once they are out of the nest, they are safest in numbers like the group pictured here because fish, water snakes, and other possible predators are less likely to prey upon what looks like one large organism. Female wood ducks are also very good at the art of distraction. In the event that a predator appears to threaten her young, she will send them off in one direction as she swims or flies while squawking very loudly in the other direction to draw the threat away from her young. Another protective mother bird often found at wetlands is the Canada goose. The goose pictured here built her nest on top of a muskrat lodge. Geese are ground nesters, so having their own private island in the water keeps almost all predators away from the nest, especially if the mother is sitting on top and guarding the nest as this mother is. Goslings grow very quickly once out of the nest and are often found close to their parents. It does not take long for geese to outgrow nearly all potential predators surviving to adulthood. While the goose itself is an herbivore, eating plants, berries, seeds, and grains, there are a few predators strong enough to catch the large Canada goose, which boasts an over 5-foot wingspan when full-grown. Great blue herons are another common wetland bird. They are masters at remaining motionless and having patience. They rely upon their steadiness and coloration to sneak up on or even wait for unsuspecting prey like fish, frogs, and other organisms. The least bittern is a less common wetland bird and is more often found in spring as birds are migrating through Medina County and using prime habitat like wetlands as stopover points to rest and find food. The least bittern uses similar strategies as the great blue heron to search for and catch prey, but bitterns take it a step further by using their feathers to blend into aquatic plants and using their specially adapted toes to cling to the plants, suspending themselves over water. As a much smaller bird, they do have to be cautious of larger potential predators. 
the common muskrat looks similar to the much larger American beaver. Besides size, if the tail is visible, muskrat tails are slim and rat-like, while beaver tails are wide and paddle-like. Muskrats are often observed swimming back and forth with smaller, soft plant materials. Unlike beavers, which eat large, woody plants, muskrat eat roots and stems of softer wetland plants like cattails. Muskrats are technically omnivores, though, and in some areas may also eat smaller animals in and around their wetland home. What muskrats do not eat, they use to construct their often dome-shaped homes made of the same soft wetland plants like cattails that they might also eat. It is not uncommon for these homes to become nesting areas for Canada geese who build directly on top of the mound. A full-grown American beaver can weigh upwards of 50 pounds, making it seem like an animal that should eat a lot of large food items. In reality, the American beaver does eat something large, but it might surprise you. They use their large front teeth, which never stop growing, to chew down trees for food and for construction. This beaver chew shows just how powerful those large rodent teeth are, and if you use your imagination, it gives you an idea of just how much beavers can change their environments. For example, they can make a woodland stream into an open wetland or even pond. In addition to woody plants, beaver may also eat leaves and soft plants like water lilies. The dam is a structure that beavers make to slow water so that water pools and becomes deeper. Deep enough water allows the beaver to enter its lodge from below the water, which is like a security system for the beaver to keep predators out. Damming up water is no small feat, though. Since the water wants to keep flowing, beavers must constantly survey and repair their dams to ensure that their home remains as they had constructed it. This is what the lodge or home of the American beavers at this wetland look like. It is a mixture of mud and sticks mounted high above the water line. This ensures that their living quarters are above water, providing them a dry place to sleep. The American mink is another semi-aquatic mammal that finds itself near wetlands. It has a long, slim body with short legs and despite its appearance can be quite fast. The mink is an avid predator and carnivore. It will catch organisms large and small, and if it has caught too much prey, it will store prey for later. They are not known for keeping a den site for long, so while this particular mink seems to prefer this pipe, it won't likely use it for very long. Mink like to spend a lot of their time in the water, are avid swimmers, and are even good at diving. Next time you're near water, see if you can find this sleek wetland predator. Thank you for joining us for this wetland study. We encourage you to explore your backyard, schoolyard, and local parks to see if you can find wetlands like the one explored here. With any luck, you just might spot some of these interesting wetland organisms while you're there.